follow your passion first. Um, you know, when I retired from the game, you know, I said they're asking kind of all the wrong questions. You know, what's the biggest industry I can get into? And it's all the wrong stuff. And you got to sit there and ask yourself, okay, what am I truly passionate about? What do I enjoy doing? And when you feel that way, I, honestly, I mean, you feel like you have never worked a day in your life. It's the most fun thing in the world. You get up in the morning excited about what you're doing. And you got to be really honest with yourself about it. If you wake up in the morning and you're dreading going to work, dude, do something else. Right. Do something else. And those are hard decisions to make. But when you make those decisions, it's a very liberating experience. And you find out that the rewards will come. I think the best way to prove your, your value is to work, is to learn, is to absorb, uh, to be a sponge. But you always want to outwork your potential. You know, as hard as you believe you can work, you can work harder than that. And that's what I tried to do when I first came in the league. But you know, basketball is such a direct competition sport. And me coming in at 17, I hated when like my teammates would say, you know, I get hit with an elbow, right? Shaq would hit me with an elbow in practice. And, like, you know, <laughs> you know, Nick Van Exel would come up and say, are you okay? I'm like, what? <laughs> like, Mao, are you okay? <laughs> what the hell's wrong with you? You know, so like, I always had that extra chip on my shoulder. So like, every day in practice for me was really trying to annihilate everybody that, was, that I was playing against. Because I wanted to prove you don't need to babysit me. Like, I, I'm fine, <laughs> you know? And, uh, and so it's always um, that competitive nature the work ethic and curiosity because I asked a lot of questions when playing with Byron Scott I asked him a lot of questions Eddie Jones who was great at chasing guards off the screens and I didn't understand how to do that I would sit with him before practice after practice magic all the Laker greats I would always sit down and just ask him questions about certain games that I studied growing up what actually happened there what did you feel there and why We were playing against the Lakers, Tom, and we were out here in L.A. So the game was at 7. It's like, you know what? I'm going to come to the Staples Center. Because we are playing, this one, the Lakers had Kobe and Shaq. Okay, this is, this is like the championship Lakers. So you know, I'm going to get there at 3 o'clock. I want to make sure I make 400 made shots before I go back into the room. And then I sit in the zone and I get ready for the game. So, you know, get in the car, get to the gym, get there. And as I'm walking onto the court, who do I see? I see Kobe Bryant already working out. So once I set my foot across that line, I started working out. And so I worked out for a good hour, hour and a half. And when I came off, after I was done, I sat down, and of course I still heard the ball bouncing. I looked down, I'm like, this guy's, this guy's still working out. He's been, he was working out for like, it looks like he was in a dead sweat when I got here. Right. And he's still going. And it's not like his moves are nonchalant or <laughs> lazy. He's doing like game moves. You know, um, I sit there and I unlace my shoes. I'm like, I want to see how long this goes. So I sit out there and watch another 25 minutes. And he got done. I said, OK, I think I've seen enough. Go play, you know, come back, get in the sauna, get ready for the game. That game, he drops 40 on us, OK? And after the game is over, I'm like, I, I have to ask this guy. Like, I, I have to understand, like, why, why he, he works like that. Right. So after the game is over, I'm like, hey, Kobe, like, why, why were you in the gym for so long? He's like, because I saw you come in. And I, and I wanted you to know that it doesn't matter how hard you work, that I'm willing to work harder than you. If your job is to try to be the best basketball player you can be, mm -hmm. right? to do that, you have to practice, you have to train. Right? You want to train as much as you can, as often as you can. So if you get up at 10 in the morning, train at 11, right? 12, say 12, train at 12, train for two hours, 12 to two. Um, you have to let your body recover. So you eat, recover, whatever. You get back out, you train, start training again at six. Train from six to eight. Right? And now you go home, you shower, you eat dinner, you go to bed, you wake up, you do it again, right? Those are two sessions. Right now, imagine you wake up at three, you train at four, you go four to six, come home, breakfast, relax, so, so, blah, blah, blah. Now you're back at it again, nine to 11, right? You relax, and now all of a sudden you're back at it again, two to four. And now you're back at it again, seven to nine. Look how much more training I have done by simply starting at four, right? And so now you do that, and as the years go on, the separation that you have with your competitors and your peers just grows larger and larger and larger and larger and larger. And by year five or six, 
doesn't matter how, what kind of work they do in the summer, they're never going to catch up because they're five years behind. <laughs> right? So it makes sense to get up and start your day early because you can get more work in. If I start earlier, I can train more hours. And I know the other guys aren't doing it because I know what their training schedule is. Right? So I know if I do this consistently over time, it's, it, the gap's just going to widen and widen and widen and widen and widen and they won't be able to get that back. So it, to me, it was just common sense. I'm like thinking, how can I get an advantage? Oh, start early. Yeah, let's do that. How do you how do you develop that, or where do you where do you learn that from? Well, I, I think it's just you know, it's just a matter of what's important to you. Mm -hmm. What's important to you for for whatever reason? You know, I, I felt like um, I didn't feel good about myself if I wasn't doing everything I could to be the best version of myself. If I felt like I left anything on the table, um, it would eat away at me. I wouldn't be able to look myself in the mirror. And so the reason why I can retire now and be completely comfortable about it because I know that I've done everything I could to be the best basketball player I could be. Absolutely beautiful, you guys. I can't believe it's come to an end. Um, you guys will always be in my heart. And uh, what can I say? Mamba out. My philosophy was a very simple one. I, um, you know, Rudy was one of my favorite films growing up. After watching that film, I come to understand if I could work that hard every day, um, being blessed with the physical tools that I have, um, what would my career be? And I made a promise to myself from that day that I was gonna work that hard every single day so that when I do retire, I have no regrets. And that was the most important thing for me is to leave no stone unturned, get better every single day. And if I lived that way, then over time, you know, I'd have something that was beautiful. But that was my philosophy. It seems like a pretty simple one, but, you know, if you live your life to just get better every single day, you do that for 20 years, I mean, what do you have? And once you have the passion, the thing that you're passionate about now, you can look at other people or other entities or other things or works of art, and you can draw things from that to help you be better at what you do. By looking for those common denominators. Johnny wanted to know, how do I prepare? How do I prepare? How do I study? How do I view the game? How do you build your game? And you know, my response is much like the way he builds products. You, know, you think sequentially. You know, yeah, you look at this, the, the end result of what you want to create, but in order to create that, there's so many other little things that go into this massive entity that, or, or device. It's no different than building my basketball game. You start with, what do you want your game to be? What would make your game most unstoppable or hard to deal with? And now you work backwards from there. And you start building it one piece at a time, one move at a time, one counter at a time. You just gotta put one foot in front of the other. And you know, sometimes I think, uh, you know, even for myself, it's, it's easy to become distracted a little bit and start trying to look at the final, what the final picture is going to look like and you know when you do that you can you can easily become frustrated with where you are at the moment so um you know my advice is just to focus on each day and you know you have a plan in place of how you want to improve and how you want to get better and you stick to that plan and, and trust the fact that you know every day that you you know um, stick to the plan it'll get you to your end result the passion came from the love for the game you know, I, I loved everything about it. Like the smell of the ball, you know, the smell of like brand new sneakers and like the sound the ball makes when it hits the ground, ball going through the net, like all those things I, I love. And so the passion comes from that because once you have that love, you just want to be a part of this thing all the time. You know, like basketball's helped me be a better person, a better friend, a better father. Well, so? oh, because there's life lessons that are within the game, mm -hmm. like communication, like unselfishness, um, like attention to detail and um, empathy and compassion. Like all those things are in the game. 
And uh, as an athlete, if we are aware of those things, um, it helps us become better human, human beings. Where did you get your killer instinct from? Well, yeah, I think a lot of it um, had to do with um, isolation. Growing up over there and being the only uh, African-American kid, not being able to speak the language, I gravitated towards the game. And in that game, you find a lot of, um, you find solace in the game. And then when you play with kids that you know, might not uh, accept you because you're an outsider, but yet when we come to play the game, that's my chance to, to, to get vengeance on them for not accepting me in there. And that's where it kind of started developing. And, and throughout the course of my life, it's always been that. It's always been the outsider and having to come in and prove, you know, or, or to seek some sort of vengeance when I play. Taking things, using things in your life that, that are scars, using those moments as a weapon. You know, using basketball as kind of like a vehicle through which to express yourself, right? So at that moment, for us to face the Celtics again, it's not about the Celtics. It's not about your opponent, it's about you. Mm. It's about you taking your inner struggles and channeling that through the game, right? As a way to, to unleash, right? So now it became a matter of how do I express that to them? How do I get them to that point where they figure this out for themselves? Because I can't say, hey, listen, I need you to play harder. So what'd you I do? You, well, I had to share my story. I had to open up to them and let them know I've dealt with things. This is the things that I use. This is how I go about focus. This is how I deal with adversity. This is how I deal with, you know, arguing with my wife the day of a game and showing up to the game and still having that focus to be able to play. Like, I use those things to open up with them. And then in turn, they were able to, to take those stories and, and make them their own. What I try to do is just try to be still and understand that things come and go, emotions come and go. The important thing is to accept them all, to embrace them all, and then you can choose to do with them what you want versus being controlled by emotion. You know, a lot of times I've seen players, even myself, you know, when I was younger, being consumed by a particular fear um, and to the point where you're saying, okay, nah, it's, it's not good to feel fear. I shouldn't be nervous in this situation, like not. Nah. And it does nothing but grow versus stepping back and saying, yeah, I, I am nervous about the situation. Yeah, I am fearful about the situation. Well, what am I afraid of? And then you kind of unpack it. Mm -hmm. And then it gives you the ability to look at it for really what it is, which is nothing more than your imagination <laughs> running its course, you know? When you're going into the league, you're going with a lot of guys that were, you know, same age, same age, you know, same class as you were going in. Were you sizing those guys up the same exact way as you did in high school? I did, but you know, in the NBA, it was actually easier. Because what I found in the NBA is a lot of guys played for financial stability. And when they came to the NBA, they got that financial stability. So therefore the passion and the work ethic and the obsessiveness was gone. So I'm looking at that, I'm like, Oh my God, it's gonna be like taking candy from a baby. Now, I wonder Mike wins all these fucking championships. <laughs> it's like, this is crazy. You know what I'm saying? Of and, 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 like, and, and then you had the players that had that passion, but weren't willing to commit their entire lives to doing that, right? It's a choice, right? You have other things. You have family, you have all these other things that you have to do. The game can't really be your number one priority. And so I was just looking at that like, man, I'm, this is gonna be fun. It's just a matter of what's important to you. And what's important to you, for, for whatever reason, you know, I, I felt like um, I didn't feel good about myself if I wasn't doing everything I could to be the best version of myself. Mm -hmm. If I felt like I left anything on the table, um, it would eat away at me. I wouldn't be able to look myself in the mirror. And so the reason why I can retire now and be completely comfortable about it because I know that I've done everything I could to be the best basketball player I could be. Mm -hmm. And so yeah, and that's where it comes from for me. You can't leave any stone unturned. I'm not one that really believe in failure. I believe you have setbacks. 
And, you know, you have to learn from those. You have to learn what are those landmines that can be avoided the next time. What are those pitfalls? You have to learn from that stuff. And um, so you're not welcome those things. It's a part of life. But are you prepared to, like, really fail at something totally new? Like, what if you're just VC? <laughs> then I'm a VC. Yeah. Yeah, you know, and then I work at it and then I'm not a VC the next year yeah. or, you know, whenever it happens. Yeah. You know, I, listen, I, my first year in the league on national TV, 18 years old, I, mean, I shot five straight air balls in the playoffs in front of millions of people. Yeah. I think my tolerance is that. pretty high. Yeah, yeah. I think I'm all right. There's a quote from uh, one of my English teachers at Lower Marion named uh, uh, Mr. Fisk. He had a great quote that said, rest at the end, not in the middle. And that's something I always live by. You know, I'm not going to rest. I'm going to keep on pushing now. There are a lot of answers that I don't have, even questions that I don't have. But I'm just going to keep going. I'm just going to keep going, and I'll figure these things out as we go. Right? And you just continue to build that way. So that, I try to live by that all the time. You know, I look at, at this incredible career you've had, and you're still just, what, 23? Mm -hmm. Do you appreciate it at this young an age, or do you have to be a little bit older to step back and say, wow, what an un unbelievable ride this has been. What, a, what an extraordinary opportunity and blessing I've had in my life. That's something that I do now, yes. Uh, it's something that I've been able to do at the end of last season, kind of step back and just enjoy the moment. Uh, and more so after September 11th. Uh, not just the game of basketball, but just just little things. Just going to the store, and, you know, or going to the movies or something like that. Uh, I've been able to just kind of just sit back and just en enjoy life. Enjoy the moment. You know, that's really the most important thing is enjoy the moment. And you know, that's why here at the Olympics, I try to get out to as many events as I possibly can. You know, and understanding that you know, these situations don't come around too often. You're here. While you're here, you have to try to take advantage of it as much as possible. Have a good time. Enjoy life. I mean, it's um, life is too short to, to, to get bogged down, to be discouraged, or um, you have to keep moving. You have to keep going. Put one foot in front of the other. Smile and just keep on rolling. What I've learned is to 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 always keep going. Always. You know, there's, there's been times, particularly early in my career, where it just feels like this is the end. Um, but what I've come to find out is that you know, no matter what happens, the storm eventually ends. And when the storm does end, you want to make sure that you're ready. You have to dance beautifully in the box that you are comfortable dancing in, right? So, like, everybody's box is different. My box was to be extremely ambitious within the sport of basketball. Your box is different than mine, right? Every kid here has their own box, but it doesn't mean that your box isn't as beautiful as mine, right? Everybody has their own. It's your job to try to perfect it and make it as beautiful of a canvas as you can make it. And if you have done that, then you have lived a successful life. You have lived with mama mentality. I mean, it's, it's just, it's, it's, a, it's an obsessiveness that comes along with it. You want things to be as perfect as they can be. Understanding that nothing is ever perfect. But the challenge is try to get them as perfect as they can be. And what can you do? It's in your control. So control what you can. I can watch film all day long. It's going to help me get better. Yes. yes. Uh, we're not on this stage just because of talent or ability. We're up here because of 4 a.m. We're up here because of two-a-days or five-a-days. We're up here because we had a dream and let nothing stand in our way. If anything tried to bring us down, we used it to make us stronger. We were never satisfied, never finished, will never be retired. My high school English teacher, Mr. Fisk, he had this beautiful quote, and, he, and it read, rest at the end, not in the middle. And I took that to heart. I believe there's time for resting at the end, but for me, that time is not now. Thank you for this tremendous honor and acknowledging my basketball career, but I'm far from done. My next dream is to be honored one day for inspiring the next generation of athletes to have a dream, sacrifice for it, and never ever rest in the middle. I come back to America in the summertime, I'm playing in the summer league, and I don't score a point the whole summer. I don't not score one point the entire one, summer? Not one point. Not a free throw, not a layup, not a steal, nothing. Zero points the whole summer. I remember crying about it, being upset about it, and my father just gave me a hug and said, listen, son, don't worry about it. We're gonna love you if you score zero or 50. 
you know. Wow. Now that is the most important thing that you can say to a child. Because from wow. there I was like, okay, that gives me all the confidence in the world to fail. I have the security there. But the hell with that, I'm scoring 60. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> right, right. Right. And from there I just went to work. I knew that I was not going to be stopped. So at the age of 18, this was my life. Right? So you can't possibly become better than me because you're not spending the time on it that I do. Even if you want to spend the time on it, you can't because you have other things. You have other responsibilities that are taking you away from it. So I already won. Do you remember your first big expenditures? Nah, not really. I, I'm not really a big, um, I wasn't a big like, you know, I gotta, gotta get this car or whatever. Um, I was just all about the game. The game just completely consumed me. That's how I, that, was, that was my focus 100% of the time. And the, the whole idea is that, you know, when I started playing the game, everything was about trying to be the best. When this, you know, win as many championships as you can, yada, 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 yada. You get older, you start to understand that really it's about the next generation, that these championships do come and go, right? And, There'll be other people that win championships, but the most important thing you can do is to pay everything that you've learned forward to the, to the next generation to come. And that's truly how you create something that lasts forever. Going through this time made me ask a lot of questions. Um, and really try to figure out what's important in life and what's, uh, you know, everything that I've kind of been holding significant you know, the championships and the endorsements and uh, maybe that's not the most important thing because I lost sight of what is the most important thing and that's family. <laughs>